Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Chief Investment Officer with Revere Asset Management. Today is Wednesday, August 21st, 5.04 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with the Revere Roundup Daily Market Insight video. Market state, we are in an uptrend. Take a look at the trend gauge in the upper right corner. We've got the coveted four green arrows, meaning leaders, market leaders, growth leaders, Acting great, and all five of the major indexes trending above the three time frames that we track. That being the short term 21 day exponential moving average, medium term 50 day moving average, long term 200 day moving average. We use each of these three time frames to gauge, as well as a market leadership, to gauge how much capital we are willing to put at risk for clients into the market. So, what happened today? We had been up eight straight days, had a consolidation day yesterday, more consolidation, nope, continued bullish action, finishing positive across the board on the indexes, despite a massive correction by the Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, coming in and saying that they overstated job growth by 818,000 jobs. That's right. Only 2.1 million added, not the 2.9 million that they claimed were added. But will anybody in the government be held accountable for this? Of course not. The federal government has complete immunity as far as sucking goes. They can be wrong and lie to you, and nobody cares. Nobody will do anything about it. So here are the numbers on the day. Our 21 over 21 list looking pretty good, up 1.52%. 18 up, three down. The big eight kind of muted today, up 0.38%. This is a good thing, actually, because with these nice green numbers, it means that breadth was where we wanted it to be. The RG8 up 1.45%. S&P 500 opened up two-tenths, pulled back to red amidst the volatility after that BLS number came out at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Equal weight uh, up 0.70. Again, there's the uh, breadth participation. NASDAQ 100 up a little less than a half percent, equal weight up 0.8. Dow up 0.14, mid caps up 1.3, small caps up 1.3. Global 6040 stock and bond up 0.37%. Our flagship grotection portfolio up 0.80%. Getting some nice gains from not only the index exposure that we have, but the leading stocks as well. We'll go through that as we progress through the video. Let's get to the charts first. Here you've got the S&P 500, as I mentioned, up eight straight days. Nice consolidation day yesterday. Let's take a look at the interday volatility here. So we opened up and we trended up for the first 30 minutes and kind of broke uh, out of the little range when the, when the numbers came out. Then started digesting the headlines. Is it positive? Is it negative? There were ranges of... Um, uh, put out there by some of the brokerage houses and analysts that we could be revised lower by anywhere from 300,000 to a million jobs. Came in at 818,000, saw a false break out of the five uh, open 30 minute range, false break down, another breakout that failed, just volatility as the market's trying to digest what's going on here. But we tried to break below. Uh, the low at near yesterday's close, at which we faded into the close yesterday. Uh, but that was just a shakeout candle. That was at a little after noon Eastern time. Then we had a nice little trend up at two o'clock Eastern time. The uh, Fed minutes came out, a little more volatility from there, but generally trending higher, but then selling off and then bouncing into the close. So Although you can see quite a bit of volatility intraday here, leaders acted fine uh, and the indexes ended higher despite the fact that uh, we had been up eight out of nine days. So make that nine out of 10 days now after this extremely violent three-day shake after the FOMC. Now what we've got to look forward to is um, Friday. Uh, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, Jerome Powell gives uh, his annual Jackson Hole Symposium speech. And uh, the, he's expected to, especially with this weak jobs number coming out, that's uh, more ammunition to cut interest rates. 
Uh, and the volatility intraday, of course, was due to are things worse than we thought. But for now, we're resolving to the upside. We'll see what the reaction is to the 10 a.m. speech. And we'll go from there. But for right now, after this violent three-day shake, uh, we've got um, a very nice trend up and leaders participating. NASDAQ 100, similar situation, finished up, uh, same day count, up nine out of 10 days. Dow Jones Industrial Average, we don't really care if this is lagging because that's actually a good thing with this being a more defensive index. It means growth is outperforming. Uh, the chart looks just fine despite the weak relative strength over the last three weeks. S&P 400 mid caps making a higher high as well. So good stuff there. And finally, Russell 2000, uh, really nice consolidation. I like the shakeout yesterday. We got back above the 21 day last week, three days up, one day down, and then showing relative strength today. We took a position in uh, URTY. That's a three times Russell index. Very clear stop. This should hold these three index, uh, these three moving averages here. We got the eight coming up through the 21. We got the 21 curling up and we got the 50 below that. Uh, so we're getting in at 2170 ish, really closer to about 2150. Uh, we got in and we should hold 2100. So good risk to reward there on small caps. Let's take a look at the equal weighted RSP. Equal weighted S&P 500 looks pretty darn good as well. Uh, relative strength lagging on this, not a surprise because the NASDAQ uh, and big tech names have been outperforming. QQEW, this looks great. Um, and all of the RG8 are trending nicely higher the same way we would want them to be if we're looking to invest in those type of names, which we do. All right, let's flip to uh, the VIX now. Surprisingly, the VIX up on an up day, although it did close at the low of the range, probably the volatility due to that BLS data coming out and looking forward to PAL uh, on Friday. The dollar, dollar down on the day, making lower lows. Uh, we do have to be, and we're getting down near support from back in December for this dollar. We do have to be aware of a snap back higher in the dollar. Weak dollar, good for U.S. stocks. Uh, snap back in the dollar could be a headwind. It's something we're aware of. But again, this is a secondary indicator, not something we take action on until it carries over into the price and volume action of the indexes and leading names. So there's the dollar. How about precious metals? GLD continues to trend higher, although down on the day. I really like the way it's uh, riding the eight-day exponential moving average higher. GDX also looking fantastic. Uh, research note that we reviewed last night, GDX is having a uh, two standard deviation out performance versus GLD. So look for GDX to take a little bit of a break relative to gold. Um, good to know when things get out of whack from uh, an extreme standpoint one way or the other. Uh, how about silver, SLV? Uh, just up a third of a percent. Bitcoin trying to muster a rally, close back above the 21-day moving average for the first time in about three weeks, coming into the declining 50-day moving average. You can see I've got an alert set above that 50-day moving average for a possible entry. On to bonds, BND, the broad bond index continues to go higher. Price up means yields down. TLT, the long bond, not much change there. TYX, the yield uh, down 0 0.47 and TNX, the 10 year down as yields continue uh, to go lower. And we're now below this shakeout low on yields from a couple of weeks ago that was also included in uh, that panic that we saw in the indexes. All right, those are inter asset correlation charts. Let's get to the tail of the tape. We're on the bull case. Uh, with the the, the follow-through day and the move above the 21-day moving average. Uh, I talked about the BLS adjustment, the FOMC minutes, Powell on Friday. He's coming into today. Were we going to consolidate via time or via price? Well, volatility intraday, but we resolved up on the day, so bullish action continues. Continued leadership and uh, continued relative strength in leadership stocks, very clearly a yes. You can see that by the 18 up and three down on our 2121 list. Day count up 
up eight of uh sorry nine of the last 10 nine about nine days up above the uptrending eight day exponential moving average seven up above the uptrending 21 day moving average um didn't fill in the sectors today, but only financials underperformed. So we had 10 out of 11 uh, sectors higher uh, on the day. My proofreader failed me. I'm my proofreader, by the way. Uh, USD, the dollar, was lower uh, to the downside. As I mentioned, only XLF uh, from a broad spider sector standpoint. So uh, I talked about extremes one way or another. We got extremely extended on our uh, Ferrari position race for ATR above the 21 day moving average. We just have a rule in house that we take some profits whenever we see that. So we did do an offensive trimming on race today. And I mentioned we bought URTY, the good reaction, the good action uh, to small cap names slightly raising our adjusted beta from 1.35 to 1.39. What are we looking for tomorrow? We're going to get some volatility into Powell's Jackson Hole speech. That's the main thing that we're keeping an eye on, but we've got to temper any volatility with the understanding that we've been up nine out of the last 10 days. Uh, so bottom line today, continued bullish action, volatility regarding that large uh, BLS revision. Uh, I do want to show we uh, also continue to run into uh, this plus two ATR. Uh, let's bring in this Keltner channel from Thinkorswim uh, again. So basically, the red line is the 21-day moving average. And then color-coded, you've got a plus one and a minus one. That's blue. A plus two and a minus two. That's green. Uh, a plus three and a minus three, that's yellow. And the light blue is a plus four and a minus four. When they're pinched tighter, uh, it's more common that you can get extended uh, multiple ATRs from uh, the 21-day moving average. But when they widen out like this, especially after this eight-day up, eight day up move that we had, you can see that we're running into some resistance here. And that resistance also corresponds to uh, the action here back from mid-July. So uh, resistance there and also resistance at this uh, plus two ATR uh, channel line on the S&P 500. So what do we want to do now? Let's take a look at uh, some names on the day. Uh, we'll go through our holdings and uh, then we're going to uh, actually the holdings and then we'll see what stood out that is in the 21 over 21 list that we don't own. So first of all, everything that we're holding, NVIDIA continues double inside day on NVIDIA. It looks like it's coiling uh, for a move. Earnings in a week and a half. Lily inside day after yesterday's big up move. That means it's holding the move up. That's a great sign. Palantir, look at this tight action, four day action. This is coiling also. But it is running into that take profit area, uh, 20 to 25% from the pivot that IBD identifies on their charts. Kava earnings tomorrow after the close, finally clearing the 100 level intraday. Good stuff there. Uber, two, tight, two days of tight action after this uh, nice move up above this, uh, near this 74, 75 ish resistance level, coiling for a move as well. And here's Ferrari, uh, just very extended, uh, took some of those gains off. Volume patterns look fantastic on this. May add it back if we pull back to the eight-day uh, moving average or if we get that 60-minute stochastic cross that we like to use uh, in, core, in conjunction with a pullback to the eight-day moving action. ITB, Toll Brothers reported earnings. Great reaction there. ITB making a higher high. CEG. Breaking out of this tight consolidation along the 21, but running into the downtrending 50-day moving average. Upstart continues to act well, up 6% today after a uh, pullback yesterday. This is a very volatile stock. Uh, Coupang bouncing at the 8 EMA the way we want it to. Spotify uh, just continuing its tight action. Uh, and Starbucks continuing its tight action after this big uh, coup for them getting... Um, uh, Brian Nichols to become their CEO, stealing him away from Chipotle. Let's take a look at some other names that were strong today that we do not own. 
and uh, app Lovin. Take a look at that coming into the top of this flat base has made a strong run up confirmed by um, the relative strength line. Transmedics up 4% today after a two day pullback. Um, let's see. Coherent. This is one I'm really uh, itching to get into. Get out of the way there. Uh, coherent one I'm really itching to get into. Had an opportunity two days ago, but my limit uh, that I had out there did not get hit. Uh, great volume patterns on this since it's earnings. Um, uh, strong reaction to earnings uh, last week. How about on the downside, what failed or did not do well today from our 2121 list? Well, not much. We mentioned Spotify, ALNY after a nice move out and a consolidation day. Uh, Fortinet with a mild pullback. This is uh, acting extremely well. Would like to see a little bit of a handle here. Uh, and that's it. Only three, three were green. I'm showing four here because uh, one was bought after uh, it wasn't included in the 21 over 21 list. But that's going to wrap it. As always, we'd like to hear from you. The email is DonnaRiveraAsset.com. If you're interested in becoming a client, my partner Dan Stewart is at Dan at RiveraAsset.com, and he'll answer the phone if you call 855 Real Wealth. That's 855 732 5932. Our flagship portfolio is named Grotection dual mandate just like the fed has a dual mandate we've got a dual mandate too that is grow assets during uptrends protect them during downtrends never know every bear market starts off as a five eight ten percent pullback never know how hard or how difficult they're going to get but one thing we do know historically is that pullbacks start from 10 to tops start from 10 to 12 percent above the 20 uh, the 200 day moving average by the time they hit the 200 day uh it's usually less than 10% move down unless it's a violent covid like uh sell off but uh we just gauge across three time frames and uh, monitor leading stocks put our best put, foot forward and describe every night and video what we do and with that i'm going to wrap it for wednesday august 21st this is Don Vandenborg with Revere Asset Management telling it like it is. Thanks for listening and have a great day.